Sure. I've, I've got a question loaded oh, up. Yeah, all right. Uh, so Jarrett here has not yet invited John Calvin into his heart. <laughs> <laughs> now I, it's my sneaking suspicion because I. Is, but is John Calvin standing at the door knocking? Of oh, yeah, so that's what I want to know. So He's been knocking for like thirty years. So oh, I'm man. and I'm uh, I'm an even more lost case because I'm a Reformed Baptist dispensationalist. Yeah, we'll pray for you, bro. Yeah, we'll pray for me. So it's my sneaking suspicion that Dan, our podcast interviewer, considers Jared and I to be his mission field for going full reformed. Oh, Dan. So yeah. we wanted. I'm not to even give... sure he thinks we're Christian. <laughs> <laughs> We're not reformed enough. We're not even covenantal. So we want to give you guys oh an gosh. opportunity. What's your 30-second elevator pitch for going full capital R reformed? Oh, well, we're not even capital R reform, but... I mean, depending on who you talk to, you, I mean, one of your former guests would not consider us Yeah. Today. Anyways, to answer his question, I'll let you <laughs> Why go don't you, No, you go first, John. Okay. I want to defer to you, and then I'll just come in from the top turnbuckle if need be. Well, I think the reason... <laughs> so I grew up uh, independent fundamental Baptist, hardcore dispensationalist, graduated from the Master's Seminary, so very familiar with dispensationalism my entire yeah. life. And I think what really drew me over was understanding the the overarching theme and purpose of the Bible. And so you have a... You have this glorious creation in the beginning, and then obviously Adam destroys it, and then the whole world is in disarray, and and you don't even you don't even really get to go one sentence before God swoops in and says, "Okay, here's the plan of redemption." And so the whole story of the Bible is the unfolding plan of redemption based upon God's sovereign promises that will not fail. That's what won me over was that this was not in man's hands, because when it was, it completely failed. It's in God's hands. And every time man gets involved, God lets it f- like completely unravel and steps back in and goes, you're unfaithful. I'm faithful. And this is why we end up getting Christ, who raises, who is, you know, comes from the line of Judah, from the line of David. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think what's so refreshing about Reformed theology and specifically covenant theology is that it really succinctly puts the Bible in one glorious picture. And when you read it, you never have felt lost because you're like, well, we're, we're progressing along this glorious story of God restoring what Adam destroyed. This is why Jesus is called the second Adam. Yeah. So. When even the promise of a Redeemer in Genesis 3.15, effectively what you have in the rest of the entire Bible from there to the end of Revelation 22 is the unfolding of the accomplishment of that promise. Yeah. And a Reformed covenantal perspective on the Scripture highlights that in a way that I think is mm-hmm. pretty glorious and gives us a lot, a lot of assurance, a lot of peace, helps us to see how the whole Scripture really is a testimony about Christ. Like, Jesus meant what He said. You know, when He, when he says that if you believe Moses, you'd believe me, because <laughs> yeah. Moses wrote about me. Covenant theology helps us to see how that's especially true. When he says, too, that you search the scriptures, thinking that in them you find eternal life, but it is they that bear witness about me. It's true. Amen. That from from the jump, Christ was the plan, and a Reformed covenantal perspective, I think, makes that very plain for the congregant to see. Mm-hmm.